Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Supported, and I apologize, we are, you know, we should probably be doing more than one of these a week, but I've been extremely busy uh, working with the folks over at Voxel Dance, and we finished up that work, and the last two episodes are going to launch on the 25th and 26th for those that are interested, and then we are going to be concluding our work with them. And hopefully, in the weeks to come, we'll be joining the Leechy Ambassador Program. Um... Uh, at least once we're done with all that other work. Anyway, cool things to come, like I said, and today we're episode we're focusing on the system called Support Projection, and that is going to be under your Support tab, and it's going to be under your Auto Supports. And we just go ahead and click on that, and we'll notice we get this little kind of like circular reticle thing, like a target. Oops, I did not want to start like that. Hang on. Let's try that again. Um, okay, so yeah, you get this little target. You go ahead and paint on this yellow target. And we'll go ahead and paint through the holes, too. I just didn't want to start there. And the reason for that, obviously, is so we can get some supports coming through the bottom to the top as well. So it has some internal support structure. Obviously, we're going to do islands and stuff separately. This is just an example of how this tool works. Now, this episode is really discussing support projection and inline supports and how you can use those on big, flat objects like these in order to really save yourself time. And I want you all to note, I'm not speeding any of this up. This is just me working on these parts. This literally takes me about 13 minutes, and I do most of the base supporting work done. It's not perfect. I'll probably go back and tweak a lot of it. But it's not going to take me nearly as long as it would have if I just went and did this from scratch. Even if I went and didn't click that auto support button like sometimes I've shown you guys you can. This is going to be a great one. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. I mean, they're all lined up and everything. You got them around the holes. It's fairly well organized. Um, we do have some supports that are going up through. Through those holes as well. Going into the model. Connecting to the top. So you do have a top and a bottom and an interior supporting structure. Obviously, like I said, need to check islands and validate and stuff like that. But look how much work that took out of your hands. And what did that take me? A few minutes? I'm telling you folks, this is a really cool way of doing it. Support projection. Um, if you haven't updated your Leechy Slicer, this one I believe released on 5.2 or 5.2.2. I'd have to check my notes to be 100% sure when the feature released. But this was one of the new ones that they released more more uh, recently in some of the newer updates. And it's great. Support Painter's great too. Inline supports are amazing, especially for flat stuff. But the projection system works fantastic for things like bases and just large flat objects. Definitely makes my work a whole lot easier. And it definitely makes it look neat as well. Because, you know, it's, it's well organized. Um, even if you're doing something like on the bottom of this, I mean, we can try to put some up the side. It probably won't, because it doesn't like it. When you try to do stuff like that, I would just place those manual anyway. And then we'll see that this will create a nice little root structure here at the bottom of this piece. And then the rest of that you can just kind of do by hand. And really, I mean, it's just going to be adding supports to the islands, and it's going to be framing that mostly. You know, we'll do a couple, uh, you know, shape frames probably around the edge. You know, like I said, you got Support Painter. That's definitely a tool that'll help you get through. Uh, if you don't like Support Painter, Inline is pretty good too. Um, you can always use the Inline. Now, a lot of people argue you can't use Inline on a curve, and I'm going to show you a little later. You can. Um, you just got to be tricky with it. Now, if you were to just completely go nuts and try to finish supporting some of the bottom sections of this, you'd probably put a little bit of supports here, again, using inline supports. Um, you know, inline supports here, inline support. I don't like clicking a lot, so for me, I'm trying to save time. Um, and that's mostly what's happening there. I'm trying to do the quick, quick and dirty method sometimes when I do these pieces, especially big terrain parts when you've got tons of them. Um, you know, and we sell the whole terrain kits as a kit. So when somebody dings that one, they're like, I want the whole terrain kit. <laughs> I got, you know, especially if it's new and I haven't done the work yet, I have to spend a, a few, you know, hours uh, working on all those files. So it's nice to have a way 
to make them make that process more streamlined. Inline sports uh, and support projector are definitely some of the good ways to do that. And that's what I'm demonstrating here. So here's another another shape. The reason I'm doing different objects like this is because they all have different shapes. So it's kind of like you get to see how this works with different shapes. Now, support projection isn't perfect. And this example right here, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. It, it won't support everything that I'm going to tell it to. Watch. This is, this is a weird thing. And I don't, I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong or maybe... It doesn't like the combination of two surfaces at once. So I'll do this, and then we'll go ahead and we'll turn the model. I'll, I'll put a little support you know, up there, just paint it. I, it doesn't usually do that. It won't usually do dainty supports. Then I'll cover the back, because that's another big old flat spot. And again, this isn't hollow. This is just this is a uh, kind of cut out, but the walls are pretty thick, so this is a pretty decently sized piece. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna paint that side there. So then we'll go ahead and apply that, and it's only gonna tell me 722. Nothing on the back. It doesn't want to do anything there for some reason. And then it's only gonna put them like that. So now I don't really fully understand why uh, it doesn't like to listen to me. Sometimes when I tell it, but you can then go back in and you can do it again. So uh, there's that. I mean, here, watch, we'll paint this wall. Go ahead and get that on there, and then I'll go ahead and do the projection preview, and then we'll click the add button. And you can see that will actually add the supports into that area. And there we go. So there you go. You filled in the space. Now, it's a little too dense. And I would probably go back and I'd refine these projections a little bit and probably less make them a little less dense. Because they're very, they're very dense. I mean, those are going to create little um, support walls. And <laughs> it's going to be really hard to crack open. So you, unless you really want to spend uh, 15 minutes cutting those with a clipper I highly recommend not doing them that dense you can lower the density you can change all that the offset the interval um, but there you go there's there's a really over supported piece of <laughs> that is <laughs> I don't recommend doing it that heavy guys but that that will work I guarantee this will print as soon as I cover the islands that'll definitely print there's no way it's not gonna press so many geez I think I'm spending more material and supports there than I am on the actual print that's just an example of how that can work, but um, it's also probably a little too much at that density. Like I said, you, you can adjust that. Um, and then let's see, we have another piece, which is like a flat, like a door wall thing. Oh, it's a mirror. Sorry. We Again, you know, this is going to be, you're just going to paint the back. And then I'm going to show you guys how you can use inline supports to do a curve. And folks love this one. When I show them, they're like, oh, wow. Didn't think of that. You just got to do it in little bursts. And I'll show you. It actually works really great. Um, you get really smooth, organized lines. This is going to be nuts. Watch this. Watch what happens when I do the piece. 12, I think it's like 1300. And I'm going to increase the interval and everything. I don't think it's going to make any difference. This is going to be a pack of supports all slammed into each other. Because certain orientations really just don't do it. Look, look at that. Blech. Nope. Sorry. I mean, your print will survive, but look how much material I'm using there. That's ridiculous. Even if you were to go and say punch this up to like three, and then punch this up to like three and a half, you're still looking at a very overcrowded situation. And, I mean, you can play around with it quite a lot, but... I still think, and that's better, I suppose, but look how interconnected they are. You're going to wind up with support walls, and then you're going to have really hard pieces of support to either clip off or remove, and that's a lot of excess material you don't need for that. It's a little too heavy. I'm going to show you how to do this one with inline supports, because I, I did mention that too. We're going to paint the bottom first. I'm going to do that, because that's easy enough. But that didn't exactly do. See, again, this is where one of them examples where it doesn't want to do what I tell it to. Now, we can try that again, or we can just go back to the faithful 
uh, in line tool. We'll just we're just gonna do in line. I'm gonna show you how fast this can be too. People love this. I, I love this. When people don't know this tool and they first see it for the first time, they want to know how the heck you're laying down supports like this um, as fast as I do it. And and it, you you're just like oh it's it's in line. They're like what? Yeah, it's a tool. It's in your support. Menu. And then they see it and they go, oh, okay, there it is. And then once you use it, you realize this is fantastic. Uh, it's definitely a time saver. It's a good work tool uh, for getting a lot of stuff done quickly. And like I said, you can you can look at that. I mean, look how, quick, how quickly I supported that piece. It's not nearly going to be as jammed up down there either. You're going to have a lot more freedom to, and then you can just, you can go back in here and you can place some supporting in the middle. There's nothing wrong with that. You can continue the border. You can bring that in uh, again using inlines the whole time, just creating the shape, just drawing around the shape, and just continuing around that shape and bringing that around until you come to the other side. And then you can continue that for a bit. Um, and then you can just kind of go along and make some lines to give you some additional support along the print. Which, again, these might not even be fully necessary because you've got enough uh, perimeter support and you've got enough base support there. This is really, this will probably work out pretty good the way it is. And then with those extra bits there, I think you're going to be fine. So again, here we are. Uh, we spent about 11 minutes on this so far, and we've pretty much fully supported four pieces of terrain. Now, like I said, short of doing islands, validation, that sort of thing, you know, we haven't finished them. But the amount of work that you can save by using the projection tool, the inline tool, even the heck, even the support painter, we'll give we'll give that its credit due because I do like that tool. Um, it's great. You're gonna save yourself a load of time. So go ahead and check out those tools if you haven't checked them out in Leechy Slicer. They are great. They're gonna be under your supporting tab. They're gonna be under auto supporting. You'll find the support projection and inline supporting. You're gonna see the settings for that under your manual settings under your supporting tab uh, under prepare in Leechy Slicer. Now, if you're using Pro and Premium, you definitely have access to these features. If you are not using Pro or Premium, um, some of the features are locked behind the pay-for versions. Uh, I'm not 100% sure which ones those are, so you'll have to find out on the website. Thanks for watching this episode, y'all. I'll see you guys real soon. We appreciate it, as always. Take care.